All right, we'll get started. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Sean Dunn, and uh, I'm with uh, IHS. Um, so we actually have an office here in uh, uh, Bangalore. I'm from Calgary, uh, Alberta, Canada, so it's significantly warmer here uh, than it is back home at the moment, um, which, is, which is okay. Um, I don't mind. Um, and I'm an internal Agile coach uh, with IHS, um, which is actually quite, you know, uh, quite interesting and unique because uh, it means I'm an employee of the company. I'm not a contractor. I'm not a consultant. But I have the, the wonderful opportunity to, to work and work with teams, internal teams across, uh, across the globe on a daily basis. So I kind of fell into that position. This wasn't something I looked to, you know, I, I thought I would ever be doing in my career. I kind of fell into it by accident. Uh, but I absolutely love it and being able to interact with uh, everyone. And thank you to uh, my local colleagues here who've been so, uh, uh, so hospitable. Uh, it's been a great experience. This is my first time to India. So what I'd like to talk about today is um, uh, building a, a self-sustaining Agile organization. And, and what do I mean by that is, um, you know, with my experience over teams in the past few years, despite all the difficulties, it's, it's actually not too bad to get teams from, whether it's waterfall or just anarchy, to, okay, let's get them to do some basic agile practices, whether it's Scrum or Kanban or something like that. that that's actually not too, too bad to do. But then when you start thinking about, okay, um, how do we make sure that we don't lose those gains? We, this newfound agility that we've, that we've discovered, how do we make sure that it isn't just the, the flavor of the month or the flavor of the year, that for you know, one year, five years, 10 years from now, beyond my current tenure, uh, how do we know that it's going to, uh, it's going to persist? And so this is kind of the, the question I, I started out trying to answer as I was working with teams and they were getting quite, you know, quite fluid and, and quite, um, uh, quite proficient with uh, the, the understanding of the principles and the values. They say, okay, well, this is, this is great. We've got people who are you know, really, really understanding the principles and the practices and the values and putting them to use and experimenting the methodology, but, but that's today. How do we know that's going to last and, and not end up like our, our you know, leaning tower of Pisa here where centuries from now it's you know, off center or, or even worse? Unfortunately, there's actually a, a, a several examples, at least one I can think of, of quite large companies who've invested millions and millions of dollars of getting agile coaches in and doing agile training um, and really being invested in it and you know, actually a few year, years later, five, six years later, they've ended up kind of